And now for something completely different. Okay. This time I'll remember to push record. Whew. Imagine <laughs> doing a whole show without pressing record. And half of another one without recording any of it. Good job, Bradley. Good, good job. thing I'm a <laughs> very good editing technician. And so I was able to line the thing up again and make sure it worked. He is. He is. Ah, I even want to make mistakes. I'm a brilliant person. I'm, ge I'm a genius. Uh, I can work my way out. Right? You support me. Of course I do. <laughs> <laughs> I do support him. <laughs> ah, well, that's nice, dear. Okay, so we're going to do some Stuart that Lee. means two things. <laughs> so, <laughs> did you hear you're clear. You're thinking about it. Did you hear about the two saggy boobs? <laughs> one, what did one saggy boob say to the other? We better get some support here, or people are gonna think we're nuts. Mm. <clears throat> All right. <clears throat> Stuart Lee. Uh, okay. He's talking about political correctness. Oh no, was that politically correct? I'm not okay, sure. let's do. It. Here we go. <clears throat> oh, Starbucks. Drinking. Now, one hesitates in the current climate to make a joke on stage about the Muslims, right? Not for fear of religious reprisals, right? When's that ever hurt anyone? <laughs> but because of a slightly more slippery anxiety, which is like basically, when you do like stand up in a small room, it's like, oh, we're all friends, are right? And we can make a joke, but you don't really know. You don't really know how a joke's received, and it could be that it's laughed at enthusiastically in a way that you don't understand, and particularly out there, and if you don't know who's watching in television, I mean, if it's on telly on Paramount, probably someone horrible, an idiot. <laughs> um, the kind of person who's awake at five in the morning, who knows what? Could be anyone laughing at this. We don't know. Awful people. And, um, so, <laughs> um, so you don't know, the problem, the problem is, 84% of people, apparently, of the public, think that political correctness has gone mad. Now, um, I don't know if it has. People still get killed, don't they, for being the wrong colour or the wrong sexuality or whatever. And what is political correctness? It's, a, it's an often clumsy negotiation towards a kind of formally inclusive language. And there's, there's all sorts of problems with it, but it's better than what we had before. But 84% of people think political correctness has gone mad. And you don't want one of those people coming up to you after the gig and going, well done, mate. Uh, well done, actually, for having a go at the fucking Muslims. <laughs> <laughs> well done, mate. You know, you can't do anything in this country anymore, mate. It's political correctness gone mad. You know, you can't even write racial abuse in excrement on someone's car <laughs> without the politically correct brigade. <laughs> jumping down your throat. And you, you don't want those people coming up to you after gigs, because that's Al Murray, the pub landlord's audience. <laughs> Missing the point and laughing through bared teeth like the dogs they are. Because <laughs> I'm, I'm 40, like I said, I was 40 last week, and I can remember before political correctness. That's why I think it's better. I remember... Well, it's better now. I remember when I was 12, there was one Asian kid in our class, and every day when he read the register out for a year, the teacher, instead of using his name, called him the Black Spot every day for a year. A uh, street I grew up in, just south of Birmingham, there was, a, I remember, a 1972, a black family wanted to move in, and all the white families put pressure on the guy not to sell the house. And six years previous to that, David Cameron never mentions it, but the Conservative Party won a, a by-election in Birmingham. And they sent out little kids with leaflets that said, if you want a nigger for a neighbour, vote Liberal or Labour. And if political correctness has achieved one thing, it's to make the Conservative Party cloak its inherent racism behind more creative language. <laughs> but, yeah. but on the whole, when, when people say political correctness has gone mad, I think, well, what do you, what do you mean? Unless it's my nan, right? And my nan says to me, oh, Stu, that political correctness has gone mad. <laughs> I go, why is that nan? She goes, well... I was in the hairdressers yesterday, Stu, and they said to me, would you like a cup of tea, Mrs. Harris? I said, yes, please. They said, well, you can have one, but you have to drink it in the waiting area because we can't have hot liquids at the workstation. <laughs> it's political correctness gone mad, Stu. <laughs> this old red robo, Stu, he's saying that we can't have tea anymore. 
in case it annoys a Pakistani. <laughs> Basically, there's a whole generation of people who've confused political correctness with health and safety legislation. <laughs> in, uh, it's gone mad. In, in the, you, like they're saying I can't have an electric fire in the bath anymore, Stu. <laughs> in case queers see it. <laughs> In the old days, you could get your head and you could submerge it in a vat of boiling acid. <laughs> and now they go, no, don't do that. What if Jews see it? <laughs> I annoy Jews. You oh could get God. your whole family and you could jump in a threshing machine <laughs> and dance around. All your arms would fly off and it was fine. And now they go, no, they've banned Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> they've banned Christmas now. <laughs> on the whole, when people say, I mean, there's a, there's a columnist for the Daily Mail, Richard Littlejohn, and he's got two catchphrases. One is, political correctness has gone mad, and the other is, you couldn't make it up. You couldn't make it up. <laughs> Which is ironic, given that the vast proportion of what he writes is no... <laughs> and about a year ago, Littlejohn did a whole page on mm. political correctness gone mad, and it was, it's gone to court now, this thing, but it was when there was a, there was a serial murderer killing sex workers in East Anglia and um, the police and the broadsheets at the time routinely referred to, some of them were teenagers and, and the, the papers would call them women that worked as prostitutes rather than just prostitutes and Little John did a whole page on how this was political correctness gone mad and you should call them prostitutes and not women that worked as prostitutes. Um, but it wasn't political correctness gone mad, it was the papers and the police thinking some of these people are really young, you know, and they have surviving family and friends, and, and, and what can we do to cushion the, this ugly word, prostitute? We, we, we'll blanket it in a, a qualifying phrase, you know. It was, it was a nice thing to do. Uh, but, but for Little John, it wasn't that. It was political correctness gone mad, and they were prostitutes and should be called prostitutes. And one wonders how far Richard Little John would go in his quest for the accurate naming of dead women. <laughs> Would he go perhaps to a cemetery under cover of night armed with a, a little chisel and a little torch, a chisel and a torch and he's there at the grave that says here lies Elaine Thompson age 19 and he's there amending it. as a prostitute. <laughs> Obviously.
Richard Little John. <laughs> Not someone who works as a cunt. <laughs> oh good. my god. Fucking half of his act was banging the yeah. microphone. Holy shit. Yeah, he, he has a different style. I, yeah. I like it though. Yeah. You know? He's comedy not a comedy. He's, he's not a belly funny. laugh um, no, guy. No. But but he sets but up it's jokes really right. well. It's alright, yeah. And and there's a little bit of sort of things in there that makes you think a little bit yeah you know exactly because everybody's always like one extreme like yeah political correctness blah or the other extreme right but you know it kind of makes you think about some of the yeah. areas where it might be good you know to have some of that so. common sense is good you yeah know? not being a racist i mean you do like just... you do like what to see comedians you know? be free to do that because you know it's just they're jokes. gestures they have immunity yeah. they, they should be able to joke about whatever yeah, yeah i think so too yes but, i mean within reason like, it, there has to be a limit there somewhere i don't know where it the is the limit comes from within but you know, you know it's like common sense right i mean like for example like the 9 11 thing you would like you wouldn't be doing jokes about it on that day or the next day even like yeah you kind of want to just kind of and then the whole too soon movement it's like, came too out. Soon? <laughs> yeah, they yeah. started doing the too soon yeah, thing. Yeah, you know? I remember that. Oh well. What do I, oh, well. What do I know? What do I know? He doesn't know anything. Don't listen to me. <laughs> listen to her. I Honestly, have to. don't listen I have to. You might as well just give up. Listen to them. Don't fight it, guys. You'll die a slow death. Just listen. No, no, it'll be very quick. <laughs> trust me. <laughs> Very fast. All right. Know we, hit you. <laughs> Hope we enjoyed Stuart Lee. Uh, we've done some other Stuart Lee. I'll put a yes. link to his other stuff if you want to watch it. Yeah. And uh, we'll talk to you later. Bye. Bye.